back. Do I still look like I'm, I'm in heaven? Not as much. Not as much. Hello. Hi. Questions. Questions and answers. Quick fire. You ask these answers, you give me the questions. Hit me, baby. First one. Favourite chockey bar? Twix. Oh, scrap. Kit Kat. Kit Kat. You, you put me on spot there. Kit Kat. Uh, no, it's got to be chunky. Chunky. Pineapple on pizza, yes. 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 My favourite topping all day long. Marvel or DC? <sighs> DC. Superman and Batman tattoo. What was your go-to takeout when on duty? Um, it changed. It was either a kebab, but then it changed to a shawarma. Was there a specific place where you'd find that? Yes, Manning Lane at Bradford, the, I think it's called Turkish Shawarmas. Best place ever, go. Say Ben recommended you. No, don't say that. Uh. <laughs> okay, so Matt Walton says, Hi Ben, mate. Besides obligatory cake finds, what other cultural masterpieces did uh, police officers create that the public don't really know about? Um, once I had a list about what you can and can't do in a traffic car and the rules and regulations of a traffic car, so I won't go into them all, but one of them were like, it said number one, if you rammed, you've got five seconds before it radiator bleeds out. No, I was bad. No traction control, I send out. So there are all these rules and regulations. So that's one of them. So basically, like, if, we, if we've got into a, a ramming situation, we never shout it. First of all, we'd try and ram the car off the road and then shout, we've been rammed. There were certain rules and regulations, traffic cars. That's all I'm going to talk about. Nothing else. Sam Dutton asks, if you were to start your policing career again, what would you do different? I'd have probably tried to have a stint on firearms, but apart from that, nothing. Nothing. Joe Black says, my question is, as the safety of vehicles has increased over the past 20 years or so, did you notice that people could walk away from serious collisions more frequently as time went on? Yeah, damn right. There were, there were cars that, even 20 years ago, you, you haven't be cut out of, but now even the little cars, all the impact points, the airbags, they were coming out, it kind of looked like it had been chewed up, but it, they were coming out with no injuries, and especially Volvos, absolutely fantastic. Role plays with Jake says, Hey Ben, love the vid, and my question is, What's it like working with NPAS above assisting you guys whilst looking for a suspect or missing person? It's fantastic. When they use, obviously, the night sun, it lights everything up. It feels like you're even getting a suntan from it. It's that hot. But when they do with the, um, uh, the night vision as well, and they can see things you can't see, it's just like, it's something from the future. We've got this technology. And then they're just sat there talking to you. They've got an observer who's talking to you, and it's just running through it. And it just feels like you've got this invisible angel on your shoulder that can zoom in, do what it needs to do, and you're not going to get away from it. So yeah, Empass is fantastic. Great question. Just for those who don't know, what is Empass? Helicopter. Where are the bird? Snacks asks. Snacks? <laughs> Apart from the awful sad stories you've been through, what's been the happiest job you've done? You're a legend and never stop. Thank you very much, pal. It means a lot. Um, happy story. Oh God, can I come back to that? Yeah. Give us a bit of a, tell us about your, uh, your audio book that's now on. Yes, um, so good news, uh, everybody. Uh, Handcuffed Emotions is now an audio book. It is available on Amazon, audio, audio Amazon, that sort of thing. You all need these digital things. Um, it's the book, it's read by me. Uh, I sound stupid. It's got a warning, I think, at the front about a Yorkshireman who's quite stupid and struggles to read. So if you want to buy it, buy it for me. Uh, you like it. Um, and yeah, Amazon, audio, but go tell Tango. No, Anchor to Emotions. Buy it. Sammy G says, hi Ben, my question hi. is, if your life or career was to be made into a film, who would play you? Well, everyone wants to say Brad Pitt, don't they? But let's be honest, he's a bit old now. I'd probably want, uh, I'm not really bothered about the height wise or anything like that, but if you could have someone to play him. I want, um, who is it that played the bodyguard? Um, Scottish actor. Do you know what I mean? Robin Hood? No, not Kevin Costner. Oh, right. Um, the, the, the bodyguard, the TV series. Um, the, oh, come on, help me out here. Rob Stark. You're one of the Starks. Rob Stark. You're, you're, you're Rob Stark, do you know what I mean now? I'll put it on screen. Oh, no. Yeah, put it up there and you'll see what I mean. So probably him, because he's an awesome actor. Or, uh, uh, uh. if you're going to do anyone internationally, um, uh, Dax Shepard, put him up as well. Kevin Costner was in a film called... Yeah, well, yeah, but I'm not on about that, because no, no, that's just... like, Kevin Costner's probably like nearly 70 now, and that just won't go down well as a traffic cop in Bradford. 
But the the person who played Rob Stark, oh, not Rob, is it Rob Stark? Yeah, it is Rob Stark, yeah. Yeah, or Dax Shepard. Velo Pulse says, what is the ratio of paperwork to hands-on policing within the police today? Um, God. Right, it's more hand, the job is more hands-on. That's what it is. But as soon as you do a hands-on thing for 20 minutes, you've probably got four hours of paperwork. So if you use that, as soon as you see action for 20 minutes, four hours paperwork. Action for 40 minutes, eight hours paperwork. Roughly on that sort of guidelines. Good question again. Stephen Wilson says, any time she's been in pursuit trying to stop someone who can actually handle a car at high speeds? Yeah. We've been in, I won't say these names, but you could say some names across Bradford. And there's some some drivers that are just fantastic. You're behind him and you're thinking, I just can't get near this bloke. He's out driving me. There's been a, a few really, really top drivers that you just think, I wish you were in traffic, really. <laughs> Even though you were a burglar and a shitbag. <laughs> shitbag burglar. Blake Spencer says, how do you personally feel about the justice system in terms of life-changing offences getting shorter sentences than, say, cannabis dealers? I think it's pathetic. I think um, justice system needs to be all completely redone, remapped, rebodied, restructured, re out however we want to do it, especially traffic things like death by dangerous driving. Uh, the, it needs to hold a, a life sentence for things like that. And then things like we were just saying earlier on, life sentences needs to be life. None of this mollycoddling people and you've got out four years early because you've served good sentence you should, should be good in prison and if you're not good you get sentences added on that's my view vote for ben for prime minister <laughs> james sheehy says what actually happens when drugs and weapons are destroyed i think that's an interesting one where do they go taken on by me uh, no they go to a secret location where we don't even get to know about it um as far as i'm aware i think there's a company that comes Again, we don't know about who they are, or they get taken somewhere to a certain location by somebody. Again, we don't know who this is, and they get destroyed. Even the police aren't allowed to know this. That's how sneaky beaky it is. How long are they held on to before they're destroyed? Oh, God. I think if it's, if it's in court, it's a few years, because the courts can be um, adjourned and things like that. Um, if it's in regards to a fatal or a murder, it's going to be a while just in case, because all else could come up. So I know we've got DNA now and other things, but something could come up in future. Um, but if it's just cannabis that was seized off street or something shit like a knife, or, sorry, something rubbish like a knife or a pretend gun, I think it'll be destroyed more or less straight away. DV says, hello Ben, what's Hi. the highest alcohol level in a breathalyzer you've ever seen? I think off the top of my head, it's one, I think it was 174 and legal limit's 35. So I think it was 174, but that's a screening device. When you go to the police station, you put them on the intoxilizer, and I think off the top of my head somewhere, it's probably being around, I think it's 140, 150, somewhere around there. And the person who was at 174, what did that look like? Were they... <laughs> Josh Atan says, morning Ben, hope morning. you're all right. I've had an application to Bedfordshire Police go for around two years and watching your YouTube channel has really opened my eyes to the parts of policing that aren't openly spoken about. What would your advice be for no recruits who have already got mental health issues but still want to challenge themselves? Love the channel, mate. Stay safe. Uh, cheers for that, buddy, and good luck with your career. All I'd say is completely never give up, keep pushing. Um, there's bobbies that have been let in with all sorts of... Um, things gone in the past so never think because there's something wrong or you, you think you've got um some sort of reason from to knock you back don't worry about that at all uh go for your dreams always reach for stars and go for it and you'll do it you'll be in there soon so don't worry sq says a question i ask all the time would you consider becoming a trainer for west yorkshire police teaching the student officers alongside your experience and skills um i've thought about this um I'm unsure, I, I don't know, I can't say, I don't know, but I wouldn't want to be an official trainer. Um, there's lots to be said about that for certain reasons, official trainers and things like that, but I don't want to, I wouldn't want to do that. If you ask me to be a guest speaker or go in on certain dates and speak about X, Y, and Z, I would contemplate that. But uh, as a, an official trainer, no. Stephen B says, Hi Ben, firstly, hope you're keeping well and keep up the content. My question is, 
What are your thoughts on firearms careers within the police? I often hear colleagues saying that they would never do it because of the responsibility. I'm curious if that's an observation you've had in your career too. No, it's the other way around. It's uh, more people wanting to go to firearms. Uh, all the time I've been in, when firearms come out, the, the posts are almost filled instantly. They're always running firearms courses. I've always said it, it should be the officer's decision whether they should be like sidearm training if they want, if the infrastructure in the police warranted it. And we could be have, have traffic cops that were just got trained. I'd happy carry a clock. Um, could I shoot someone? Again, we've been through this, but. I don't think I could shoot someone, but in the right circumstances, yeah, I will not think twice about shooting someone. Does that make sense how I've said that? It, you know what I mean though, don't you? Mm -hmm. If if there were a shoot, someone shooting and killing people randomly, I will not think twice about shooting him and killing him. And I don't think I'd lose a minute's sleep over it. But could I shoot someone that were, had a chair leg wrapped around a bin liner or whatever? No. Lloyd Cruikshank says, hi Ben. Hello. A question I've always wondered is, have you ever arrested anyone who's either been fam famous in the community or an actual celebrity? No comment. <laughs> okay. Ben Rutherford, in the last video you spoke of driving at 100 miles an hour in a 30 zone. Are there guidelines that you need to follow regarding speed, for example, three times the limit, etc., or is it just up to your judgment? No, it's up to your judgment. It's how qualified or how skilled you feel at that time. Uh, speed's relative. It's, all, it's just a number. It doesn't matter what speed you're going. It can be going 120 and 30 zone. It's how you feel, how you handle the road. Um, you are giving those numbers by the state and DVLA to say this is an acceptable speed for this road. But don't forget, we are highly, highly trained in what we do, where you might not be able to drive at 70 in a 30 zone, but just because we can. It goes back to that that thing, doesn't it? You can't fly a plane, but someone else can. If I could learn to fly a plane, but someone else is a stunt pilot, do I think what a stunt pilot's doing safe? Well, no, I don't, but I'm not a stunt pilot, am I? So um, it's down to your own judgment, your own guidelines, and how safe you feel at the time. Jack Evans says, what are the rules with speed camera vans? Is it 10% plus two, etc.? I think each um, force, does their own, some are 10% plus, I think it's 10% plus three most places. Uh, I think some people might even have a no tolerance level, but there's always the um, speed awareness courses. But I've been out of it that long now, I wouldn't have a Scooby what ours is in West Yorkshire. So try and drive at speed limit, and if you can't, just, you know what I mean, switch yourself on a little bit. What movie can you watch over and over without getting tired of? Back to the Future. Da, da, da. Harry Carter asks, was there a lot of dark humour you had with fellow officers to help you deal with traumatic things? Definitely. We always used to say, if we don't laugh, we'll cry. There were times when we sat with dead bodies eating sandwiches or we were just talking over people with legs and arms cut off. And then when we were getting back to office, we were saying stuff that we were all laughing about, but we are saying, if we don't do it, the term, you'll, if you don't laugh, you'll cry, is basically a, a term for mental health. And what it should be, it shouldn't be that, it should be talk, 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 and talk a little bit more. Does ketchup belong in the fridge or the cupboard? Oh, awesome. Cupboard. I love this. Steak, do you have rare, medium, rare, or well done, or how's it? Right, good question this. I used to have mistake cremated. It used to be like a block of like brick. Uh, met a man called Angelo. Uh, Angelo educated me, and he took me down some steps, and it went to medium, and now I'm a medium rare dude. Got to be medium rare. Uh, that was a guy called Dexterity who asked that question. Awesome question, mate. Thank you very much. Ian Porter Nelson says, if you were a packet of crisps, what kind and flavour would you be? Um, right, I'm just going to mix this up now because I've just been eating a juice to salt and vinegar quavers and that is the best crisp in the world, bar none. It's even taken over salt and vinegar McCoy's. So if you're watching uh, Jack Mate and Jack, uh, happy hour. Salt and vinegar, quavers, best crisp ever. So Fantasy says, what are the biggest changes in policing compared to when you first joined and would you still join the police if you were 25 years old today? Uh, the biggest changes are the technology. When, when I joined, we didn't even, I don't think it even registered insurance on cars. Uh, all the systems were all green screen like you used to have in the 80s, early 70s and 80s. If you don't know about that, go ask your parents or your grandparents. Um, and what I joined now, well, yeah, because I always wanted to join the police. Would I recommend someone to join now? Yes. But would I join now knowing what I know I wouldn't join? 
that sounds a bit strange, but everyone should always join police. If you want to do it, do it. And I'd back anyone to do it. But if I knew everything I'd known from 2001 and then wanted to move forward and say, you could go back to 25, join now, I wouldn't join. I'd go traveling. Corey46 says, what's the oldest person you've arrested? Oh, Christ. Old. Old. I think in their 80s. I think. Old. Do you remember what they've done? Um, no, I think it might have been mental health act. I think it might have been mental health act. Okay, right. That just, that must just say something as well. I don't take that lightly. That's, you do anything not to lock someone up of that age. I've even been at shoplifters. Um, where they're in the 90s and they've stolen a pack of biscuits or whatever, got some bit of dimension, I ain't locked them up. I won't lock people up like that. Criminals need to be locked up. Uh, official Massey says, hey Ben. Hi. As an ex-traffic cop, I presume you're also into cars and bikes in your personal life. I'd love to know what you've driven slash ridden over the years and if being TPAC trained has ever helped you in a situation off duty. So my, I started out first cars I've ever had. Uh, I had a MG Metro Turbo XR2 on the Civic Type R, a Clio um, 1.8 16 valve. Uh, I've had Monday SIs, a Ford Focus ST Estate, Clio 182, oh sorry 172, Sat CC, and now I've got my 18 van motorbikes. R1s, R6, G6R600, G6R750, Suzuki Bandit, VFR800, and I've currently got an MT09 Tracer. And in regards to oh, cars that I've driven, um, I've driven most cars you can think of. I've, my friend Simon let me go to Donington and drive his uh, McLaren 720S, which I might be able to put a photo up here. Um, and being TPAC trained hasn't really, what you say, got me out of any scrapes, being advanced drivetrain has done. It's got me out of a lot of issues, but it's nothing to do with my driving, it was to do with other people, such as lane sw switching up motorway, cutting you off, cutting your gaps off, your junctions off, uh, especially being on a motorcycle, I've been able to see people edging out junctions and um, preempting what they're gonna do, so I've been able, able to react in time. So yeah, being an advanced driver and an advanced motorcyclist has served me well in the past. Matt Hanford asks, uh, when you got a shout for a big pursuit and you stuck the sirens on and booted it, did you ever have a song that went along with it? <laughs> oh God. Yeah, and I can't think. Oh God, my brain's gone to rat shit. It wasn't Bad Boys, because that's that's what everyone thinks it's going to be, but it wanted, it, oh, what were you just sing? Do you want me to come back to it? You might have to come back to that, might have to have a minute on my own there, yeah. thinking about that. Yeah. I, I, I want to say Built This City on Rock and Roll by um, even brains going out of that. Is it Starship? Starship, yes. Yeah. Um, but I can't, there was were, were something a little bit more up. Yeah, leave it with me, let yeah. me come back to that. Okay, Craig Soden says, what's the most effective piece of kit you had as a police officer? Something that you couldn't have done your job without? <sighs> My pen. I know it sounds shit, but it was so powerful while your pen you could go to someone who's been speeding and say, right, I'm getting my pen out and they're bursting into tears. I know it sounds stupid. As soon as that pen touched that piece of paper, people would be like, oh, my life's over. I'm gonna get fired. I could go, I could talk about AMPR, I could talk about baton and cuffs, I could talk about um, having all your devices and fingerprint machines, and, but you, you can live without all them. An old school Bobby can live without all them. An old school Bobby just needs his nose, his eyes, his, his feeling of like, you know, his sixth sense in your pen, because when that pen came out, I want to fuck you up big time. I shouldn't really say that, should I? Shouldn't that come out like Basically, you were going to get prosecuted, or something was going to happen when the pen came out, don't make that pen come out of pocket. That pen comes out of pocket, you're getting done. So I think it was, I suppose it was the pen. I know it's a boring answer, but if you think about how powerful, they always say the pen's more mighty than sword or whatever, and it is. It's massively mighty. It's like the hot fuzz as well, isn't it? Because the notebook, the notebook is his most important piece of kit. What's that? Hot fuzz. That's what he says on hot fuzz as well. Is that what he said? Yeah. All right, yeah. Yeah, yeah the pen. It's You cannot get a, And there were so many times I'd pull people over and I'd get the pen out. The pen would come out. Like that. And it can be dead.
it'd run out of iron, it'd run out of ink, whatever, and you're like, bollocks. So you think, count yourself lucky. Then you had to go buy like 20 biros, you know, Woolworths or whatever it is, or when Woolworths existed. But imagine that, trying to write a ticket in your pendant work. You look right, dick, don't you? Uh, Jack Gregory says, can the police interceptors footage filmed by the police, uh, filmed by the camera crew be used in evidence in court? And if it is, is that footage still allowed to be used in the show or does it have to be cut? Uh, as far as I'm aware, no, it can be used as evidence because that's the idea of the the pursuits and the foot chases and the continuity that we give over and the evidence that's there and what's said after caution and stuff like that. So, yeah. Cool. Dark Slide 1990. Says, that's an awesome handle, isn't it? Dark Slide. Says, is there anyone you've thought, this guy doesn't deserve to be nicked, but I have to nick them anyway? Yeah. Uh, I, saw this, I saw this comment and I thought about this. I once went to a domestic with um, uh, 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 a fellow officer ages ago and we had a policy of someone will always get arrested and I just thought it was bullshit. And we had to run it past a sergeant and a sergeant said, that, yeah, lock him up, uh, whatever. And I'm, like, I'm not locking this lad up. You may not want to lock him up, you come here and lock him I'm not locking him up. No, policy is you will lock someone up. If we leave him there and he stabs her and kills her, we've got a, a duty of care. Yeah, we've also got a duty of care, but we also need to, if you lock someone up, you can ruin their life. So I locked him up, drove him to his mum's address and de-arrested him and then called it there. So I got a tick for an arrest, but I just de-arrested him. That were it. But yeah, I, I, I'm not happy with just if, if my sergeant or a sergeant told me to lock people up, I wouldn't lock them up unless I wanted to lock them up. No one can make lock people up. Right, yeah, because we had a, we sang songs when we were often at pursuits or, and we, yeah, we, we always used to go bad boys, bad boys, but we also sang songs, do you know what I mean, as well? And, there were some songs that were sang all times. Funniest moment, do you say funniest moment or the, the, the happiest moment? Mm -hmm. I um, the I, 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 the, I, can't, I can't pinpoint that, but one of the happiest things were when people went missing, and especially children, like went walking streets or a four year old escaped from garden, that sort of thing. Uh, and you found them close by or whatever, and you reunited with your parents. And that were always good, because then you know, I have done my job and I've done it to the best of my ability. And there's something about a little four-year-old kid, five-year-old kid, that sees a car pull up and you get out and you're like, are you so-and-so? And they know who you are, they know you're a bobby, and they can hear radio beeping. First thing, what we are, never did, well, get them in the car, because that encourages them to go with a stranger. So we wouldn't do that, we'd just say, can you just wait here? And we'd hold them and talk to them at Sight Road. We'd even sit on his bums, and you'd, just, you'd sit there and let them play with radio, put the hat on, and let them play with your handcuffs and just see all your kit and radio where you are and they get mum or dad to come to the scene. Because you don't want to get a four year old in the back of a police car, do you? Let's be honest with you. It's just encouraging them to go with any stranger, Tom, Dick or Harry. I don't know who Harry is, but... Right, first of all, I want to say thank you to everybody out there for all the questions and answers. Um, well, the questions, because I give the answers. But the... <laughs> I'm shit, I'm sorry about this about firing all the questions to me because it really, really means a lot and I love interacting and I love doing it for you. So the more questions you throw my way, the more we can do this because it, it, it sparks memories in me. Um, also, just remind you, the new book, Hotel Tango 2-3, that's out now available on Amazon. And uh, Handcuffed Emotions, the first book, is now an audio book which can be bought from Amazon and Audible as well. So once again, thank you very much and I love doing it and keep them coming and keep watching. Bye-bye.